Father, in Jesus' name, we praise and worship you this day. We thank you, Lord. It's a beautiful, beautiful day just knowing that you are living, Father, that you are alive. Hallelujah, Jesus. That makes every day perfect because we know that you're in control of all things, Lord. Regardless of how things might raise their ugly heads, we trust you. We have put ourselves in your hands, Lord, knowing that, Father God, you are able and willing to be in control of us in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Jesus, for the word this morning that we're going to receive that will help us, Lord, to have a light under our feet. Hallelujah, Jesus, a lantern unto our pathway in Jesus' name. Bless our ears and eyes to understand in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. <coughs> amen. So, uh, the title of this is servants of my father's house, but it's all God's. Because people tend to think that since he created everything, it's all his. Because he originally created everything, right? But it's not all his. And we sort of talked about that a little bit. But um, we start back in last week, or last portion of this message was about meditation. So... The definition of meditation in the Greek is meliteo, and it means to revolve in the mind. That's what meditation is. And in Hebrew, it's siak, I believe, and it means to commune with oneself. That's meditation. Really? So that's what it means in Hebrew, to commune with oneself. Mm. All right, so <clears throat> the parable is from 627, Matthew 627, where Jesus said, um, where we got into the meditation the last time is that Jesus said, how can any of you by thought, by thinking, meditating, communing with yourself or revolving in your mind, add one cubit to your stature? You can't turn yourself into anything just by meditating about it. You know, you can't do anything on your own is basically what Jesus is trying to say. And of course we went into all that in the first part. But um, the scripture for this week is John 14, 2 through 20. So okay. we can read that really quick. 14, Jesus, 4 through that 20. I am the way, the truth, and the life. 14, 2 through 20. That takes in 14, 6. Yep, it's in John 14. For shard. You want me to start reading or what? Go ahead if you're there. 2 through 26. 2 through 20. 20. Stop it. 20. All right. <clears throat> In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. This is Jesus speaking. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way you know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. Okay, so a lot of people just read over this. Right. Right? And, but the question you have to ask yourself is, he says, where I go, you know, and the way you go, way I'm going to that place, you know how to get there. So where is it? If they already know. Well, then Thomas blurbs out, I don't know. <laughs> okay. What are you talking about? Where are you going? And how do we know how to get there if we don't know where you're going? I don't understand. So Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No, man's come, no man comes unto the Father but by me. Mm-hmm. If you had known me, you should have known all, the Father also. And from henceforth you know him and have seen him. So, See that? So where's Jesus going? If he's the way and he's right there in front of you, where's he going? Where do they have to go? I mean, there's all these questions now, you see. you got to have all these questions in your mind. If you're really reading it, you should be under, have all these questions. Right, there, it's like it doesn't make sense, right? If you think about it... It doesn't make sense if you think about it in the way that it's always been translated. Now, I brought, before we go on into Philip's question here, 
Because <clears throat> Philip asks, well, show us the Father then. If we've seen him, I've never seen him. What are you talking about? Is what Philip says, but... Yeah. Anyway, um... They all question what he's saying. Right, because in their minds, they're thinking the same way that we interpreted what Jesus said, because everybody goes over it, and they think about this la-la land somewhere in outer space. They're thinking carnal. Exactly, because they, they think of a mansion. The first thing that comes to your mind is your house, right? These or some, people ain't even been born again. Right, well, right. <clears throat> they're not Christians. But right. what I'm saying is the first thing that comes into your mind when you read this passage is your house or something better than your house, a castle or something, right? Mansions. These people are law Christians. So, if there are any, you know what I'm saying, if there's any relation to God, they're law, law uh, Christians. Right. Well, I brought all these translations. So we have all these new translations since the King James Bible, and I just want to read every, I'm going to read every one of them. Even Young's literal translation, quote unquote, okay, which is not really literal trans. It's the literal Greek into English, but it doesn't give you the meaning of the passage. Is what I'm saying. <coughs> so, New New International Version, circa 1998, 1984, says, "In my Father's house are many rooms, many rooms. If it were not so, I have told you. I would have told you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. I'm going to." So it puts in your mind that, well, Jesus is going from this place to that place into another room, right? Uh -huh. Like you would in the house. You go from one room to another room. And Jesus is going in there, dusting and cleaning up, so I can go live there. That's yeah. in thought in your mind. That's the New International Version. New Living Translation, uh, copyright 2007. There is more than enough room in my father's home. If this were not so, I would have told you that I am going... If this were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? That's New Living Translation. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Copyright 2001, English Standard Version. In my father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? Okay. Again, what's the image? The image is He's going, going from one room in the house to another room in the house, and, and that room's dirty, and Jesus is cleaning up, or making a new room on the house, new addition, and that's where you're going to live. Mm -hmm. Thinking about an afterlife, right? Uh, New American Standard, 1995. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you, for I go to prepare a place for you. International Standard Version, 2008. There are many rooms in my Father's house. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going away to prepare a place for you? God's Word Translation, 1995. Copyright. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not true, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? Then we got, I won't go on. They all say pretty much the same thing. Can I make a comment? Wait. Okay. They all say pretty much the same thing. But the image that you get in your mind from all these translations. Okay, and now some of these translations, Good. like oh. Weymouth, Webster's Bible Translation, the and Darby's, and all these, they kind of sort of are there to try to explain the meaning of the passages to you in their translations. Okay. Their translations. Okay, well, let me just read Darby's. In my father's house there are many abodes. Were it not so, I had told you, for I go to prepare you a place. Okay, and then Webster's Bible translation says, In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you. Okay, so, that's the image you get. And all these translations, since the King James Version, which are there to try to help you understand the meaning of the passage, mm -hmm. have failed... Or the beyond. To give you the meaning of the passage. Yeah. yeah, they're supposed to be more educated, better translation, more correct and literal to understanding of what Jesus really said. And, and I'm here to tell you that it's wrong. And we've been teaching it wrong for 2,000 years. So, comment. Go ahead now. Uh, you remember Lazarus and the rich man? Yes. And Lazarus, well, he went to a place. Right. He went to Abraham's bosom. Okay. Now, in Jesus' crucifixion, just a couple days after this incident, okay, thief on the cross, he, he recognized who Jesus was, believed in God, and asked forgiveness, and the Lord said, Why, this day shalt thou be with me in paradise. Mm -hmm. So there's another place, see. Where's paradise? Where's Abraham's bosom? I mean, there's plenty of abodes. Don't necessarily mean it's heaven. Or where we're going to end be. Okay. But I'm just saying. See once you read and study. You find out. That 
God is in control. You know, Jesus is in control. And the beyond, it, we can't really know till we get there. Right, but that's not well, the purpose of this passage is what I'm trying to say. Jesus isn't relating a, uh, I'm going to the hereafter and prepare a place, a new heaven and new earth, even though uh, Jesus does say that, but that's not what this passage is saying. Okay, and that's what we're going to try to get across. What, Mom? Go ahead. Uh, if you watch any home and garden TV, which I watch a lot of that as a woman, and uh, you'll see them fixing up rooms. They'll come into your home and they'll clean everything out, and then they'll refix it up and, mm -hmm. and make it more glamorous than it was before. Mm -hmm. Okay, and if you watch enough of that, then that's what comes to your mind as images. You're right. seeing the Lord go prepare a place. Well, you know, and you're thinking, okay, he's going to go in and he's going to take all the furniture out, rearrange it. Then when I get in there, it's just going to be glamorous. I'm going to just look at it with an ooh, ah, and so forth and so on. So, you know, that is what the images that we have because that's our human error is to always see something through the carnal eyes, you see, through humanity. Right. And the, but this is the way it's been taught. The, and well, every true service for the past God... <coughs> <coughs> at least a hundred years, maybe yeah. even more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, but at least in the past hundred years in the modern church, it's been taught this way. Yeah. And in, in that image, because and why do people think that way? Well, exactly like we said, that's the image that's flaunted that in front is. of your face daily, uh -huh. right? Yeah. And so that image is all that's in your brain, and that's the only way you'll know how to interpret true. this. That's true. If you don't have the Holy Spirit to lead, guide, and direct you into all truth. Right. There you go. Okay. So. Now, let's, let's go on. So, we're going to finish this passage, and then we'll get into the, the literal Greek words and the meanings of the words. But, okay, so All Jesus right. said unto him in verse, or Philip asked the question, Lord, show us the Father, and it will suffice us. In verse 8, 9, Jesus said unto them, Have I been so long time with you, and you have not known me, Philip? Mm -hmm. He is... He that's seen me has seen the Father. There you go. And how do you say then, show us the Father? Because, you know, that's what we don't get in our brains. And I'll, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll give you a good parable. And this is, a, um, shoot, what is that dude's name? Not Isaac Asimov. Um, oh, God, who's that other famous astronomer that's an atheist, big atheist? He's always on TV. He's dead now, but... He would have been on TV all the time when he, when I can't he, while we were growing name. up. Yeah. And, uh, oh, shoot, man. Well, I knew him then. Well, anyway, he's a big atheist guy, and he'd come up with this, uh, trying to explain the, what the fourth dimension would be like in our minds, and we only see three dimensions. And it's impossible to really understand the fourth dimension, and fifth, and it sixth. It wasn't Hawking. <laughs> no. Um, <clears throat> Anyway, okay. I, it'll come to us later, but yeah. it, it doesn't matter his name. Yeah, right. I wish I could think of it for reference sake, but whatever. Well, he tried to to explain in this PBS show, he tried to explain... The fourth dimension. The fourth dimension, and how it might appear to somebody who's in the third dimension. Okay. Okay, well, that's God. We have these third dimensional brain chemistry and chemicals going on, and all I think we understand is and see and know are those things around us. Right? Well, God, he isn't, he isn't really a place. He isn't really a person. But it's related to us as person because it's the only way we can understand. The way he moves and, and has his being and talks is in the fourth dimension kind of thing. Yeah. You know? It's not even comparable to us. Mm -hmm. And so when, when Jesus says, you've seen me and so you've seen the Father, we think, well, seeing a person standing beside us is seeing the Father. Mm -hmm. That was Philip's mind, right? But that's yes. not Jesus' mind. Okay. Because he just came from the Father into this world and took on flesh. Well, <clears throat> then, so this seeing the Father is something different, but Jesus is saying, see the Father. So then Peter said, so then he says to Peter, well, how do you, how come you're asking me, show me the Father? You've seen me. And he's not talking about seeing him literally in front of them at that person. Like, if I see that, I see the Father. He's talking about a different kind of seeing. And not the seeing either that you comprehend with your mind. Or oh, eyes. I understand. Or eyes. Right? Or your eyes. Right? He's talking about a different kind of seeing. And that's what we want to try to get across here. 